Welcome back. In the last section, what we did was we calculated the boundary conditions, and they can be mathematically expressed here, such that the wave function in the region of x is less than or equal to 0, or x is greater than or equal to L, must be 0. So if we apply these to the general solution to the time-independent Schrodinger equation, we calculate the wave functions of a particle living in an infinite potential well, extending from x is equal to 0 to x is equal to L. Said differently, we're going to get those boundary conditions and we're going to plug them into this particular solution here. The first boundary condition is that the wave function must go to 0 when x is equal to 0. So we plug that into our general solution of the time independent Schrodinger equation. We know that the sine of 0 is 0, but that the cosine of 0 is non zero, it's equal to 1. And this basically means, or this implies, that the coefficient a must be equal to zero. Now the thing is, what we're going to say is that the coefficient b is non-zero. And the reason we say that is as follows. If we also said b was equal to zero, then we get the, what's known as the trivial solution. We get basically the wave function is zero everywhere, which isn't really of any good to us. So we, we must, we stipulate that b is non-zero, and we apply the second boundary condition. The second boundary condition is that the wave function when x is equal to L must be equal to zero. So basically we've got rid of the, the section that at A cosine and we're only left with B sine. We plug in L and we find that since B is non-zero, sine of KL must be equal to zero. And to tie it together, we know that the wave function at x is equal to zero and the wave function at x is equal to L must be equal to zero. Both of them have to be equal to zero, hence they have to be equal to each other. So since b can must not be zero, we have that the sine of zero is equal to the sine of kl is equal to zero. Now that begs the question, when is sine zero? When do, what makes sine zero? The answer is n pi. So take a moment if this particular line is new to you. And this implies the sine of kl is equal to the sine of n pi. That means the arguments are equal and that kl is equal to n pi. Said differently, k is equal to n pi over l. And since it is dependent on the integer n, we actually give k a subscript. So we say k sub n is equal to n pi over l. And now basically we have calculated the wave function for a particle living in our infinite potential well. We started with the general solution of the time independent Schrodinger equation. We plugged in the boundary conditions which said that a was zero which meant this section went to zero. Then we calculated the second boundary condition which gave us that k sub n is equal to n pi over l. Now we need to calculate the, the constant b and we're going to do that in the next section.